<coughs> the good thing about being in a storm is that you get inside, you batten down the hatches, everything's hopefully secure, and I what can you do? Uh, you know? The last video just worked, but as I'm, I was saying, it's not so bad being in a storm, because you're inside, batten down the hatches, everything's okay, everything's secure, and you just ride out the waves. And it's, you're in your own little world, because you're, you know, you're quite insulated, you know, it doesn't seem so bad when you go outside, it's howling, howling like a, a werewolf, but um, inside here it's not so bad, creaking and stuff. And you just have to make sure you don't get hit by things that are flying around. But of course, near near the end uh, uh, of the trip, I wasn't going to be allowed just to sail in on you know, a lovely sunny day, was I? So, and maybe, I'm only like 38 miles from Mallorca. 38 miles from Mallorca. And uh, of course it's another day to sail around to the north of Mallorca to where I'm going to uh, haul Carissia out and give her her loving and tendering and all of these things that she deserves. Um, so anyway, that's it for now. I've got no more paraffin left so I can't have any hot tea or food. But that's okay, like I said, who knows how long I'm going to be out here. See the sun is, is coming through now. I mean it could be, I don't want to say it could be near the end of the storm because you know, you know, <laughs> calm before the storm as they say. But we'll see. Anyway, I'll get a touch in a bit. Carissia does heave too really well. You can see how kind of flat it is, it is on this side. Compared to the windward side. Like I said, it's calming down a bit now. I don't know if it's a calm before the storm, but at the moment, It's all okay. What I do is I just get myself out of the hatch. So I've got my head outside the hatch. Because I like to be outside. And if I see a big, big wave coming, then I think it's going to crash over us. I just get myself down into the cabin and close the hatch. I get splashed a bit, but that's okay. I am at sea. So good fun, he says. Oh. Let me just close this a bit. Oops, so I'm going to put this down a second. Well, see when you're inside, it's, not, it's okay. So in the last 24 hours, I've, I was becalmed, totally right, as you, as you know, and getting really frustrated and, and worried and everything because of the rocks and the usual stuff. And um, then last night, the wind, I told you, the wind sort of picked up and Carissia seemed to say herself, as she does sometimes. I think it's with a little help. And, um, and last night, I put myself, I managed to, for the first time in a long time since I've came into the med, I put myself onto a, uh, a beam reach, 
and uh, Bill the Bungie steered us all that all last night. I had to make a couple of adjustments, but I must have had about I don't know seven or eight 20 minute bursts of sleep. So I got some sleep last night. I know that because of all the different dreams I have. Because when you go into these little cycles of sleep, you don't get into a deep sleep, you get into like the, the is it a dream, the REM, the dream sleeps. And so you have loads of these little dreams, which can be disorientating in, when you wake up from them, because you don't know what's real and what's a dream. But um, yeah, so I woke up, had a look around, could see the big big clouds coming, and uh, it, I had time to, like everybody says, always reef early. So I had time, I put two reefs in, well, all the reefs in, two reefs in the mainsail, uh, and I, I hold, I reefed in the uh, Genoa, and just as I'd done that, the wind kicked up, so I just heaved two straight oh, away. Still hove two. Uh, can't cook anymore uh, because the leak I had, is all, I found that there's also another leak down, uh, down in this pipe here, and it's been leaking down into the bilge. And I knew there was a smell. I just didn't know where it was coming from, and finally. It's given up the ghost. So I'm um, down to things that, well, I haven't got much cook any. I've got a few eggs, which I don't really want to eat raw. So what I'm going to have to do is porridge. Hopefully it'll uh, soften up and I'll have to have that. And I've got some pate and tomato. And I've got a couple of tins of tuna fish and stuff like that. That's it. So let's hope this uh, gale packs in soon. It's gotten a bit worse again. I thought it was clearing up, but the clouds are coming back again and the waves are, the waves are coming again. So breakfast, pate and tomato. Yeah, I know there's water. I told you like, there's a problem here. There's a problem everywhere, but it's all good fun. Well, so close and yet so far. That seems to be the uh, song that they should play <laughs> when they make a movie of this. Um, I've learned, I can't fight it, you know, over these six, seven weeks I've been at sea, I've learned I just have to accept it. I'm so close to the end of this journey and um, the sea is just not letting me go, you know. It's been a hard slog all the way. Yeah? No matter if I was inexperienced or experienced or whatever. I've, every, as you know, every, nearly every single day there's been some kind of strangeness, well, strangeness, just weather. You know, it hasn't very often I've had a good sailing days in a row usually not even one full day it's been part of a day I don't know if this is the normal thing I mean a lot of the videos on YouTube and that they're all going across the Atlantic and stuff and so you know they've got the trade winds so they've got the wind behind them and yeah you can hit the doldrums in the Atlantic but they know it's coming so this may be just a normal thing um, or maybe it's just my inexperience has made things a lot more difficult than it, than it needed been. But that's okay because that's part of the experience, isn't it? Now I'm more experienced. So I'm just going to chill out here, keep a watch, make sure no ferries or big ships decide to hit me. Well, there's not much I can do. And uh, as soon as the wind dies down a bit and the waves uh, subside a little bit, I'm going to try and head off again and we'll see. Um, really, I'm only like, so close, <laughs> and yet so far. Well, thunder and lightning and storms. I started to sail because the wind was getting a bit lighter. And now we've got, in the distance, coming thunder and lightning. There's not much I can really do except hope it doesn't hit me. Well, the storm will probably hit me, but I can only hope that the lightning doesn't hit me. Uh, if it does, uh, who knows? Well, you know, cry tonight, I suppose. I don't know, I think it... 
Well, I wasn't expecting this. I was expecting anything and everything, but really, I didn't really expect a storm. Oh dear, what can we do? Opa! Okay, I'm just videoing this for prosperity, in case anything happens to me. And <laughs> you never know, dear. And hopefully somebody might find this somewhere. And I'm out. Here we go again. I've had to come in, it is just unbelievable. And I've, I couldn't lash the tiller, I couldn't do anything. I've just had to come in. It is unbelievable out there. See, I know the Mediterranean gets storms in September. That's why I was trying to get here before then, but you can hear it. So we'll just have to hope for the best, eh? But I'm going to have to probably go outside and try and sort out the sail somehow, because we're not heaved to. But the wind seems to have died anyway, while well, we've got this downpour, so... <sighs> it had to happen! It had to happen! It had to happen. Back inside. Try to sail for a bit. Worked for a little bit, but then it got even worse. I can, I can actually quite say this is probably, if you take it in total, it's probably the worst weather because you've got these mad seas which are slopping and big and all over the place and in all directions. And then you've got now a gale, so there's a gale blowing and thunder and lightning, rainstorm. I don't know if you can hear it. It's like I said, it's like a little cocoon in here. But when the wind and everything gets over too much, being hove too doesn't work. So I'm hoping that uh, it doesn't get too much because if it does, I'm going to have to go out there and uh, take down the sails. And then we're just bare pulled. And that will turn into a nightmare because then we'll be beam on to the sea. And, uh, don't really want that to happen. So I'm hoping that um, Carissa can deal with it the way it is. Leave two, hope to. Isn't it strange? La could, this could have been the last day until I got to the mainland. I would have had to sail around Mallorca, but I could have got there today. And then this, this hit. And, uh, Three times now I've tried to sail today, move on, and every time I've looked and checked, and I'm, I'm, I'm in the same place. So I keep moving, I keep going back to the same place, I'm, I'm almost in the centre between Ibiza and uh, Mallorca. Um, like I said, there's nothing I can really do and keep a watch out for ships, but if a ship comes, well then what can I do? He's going to have to do any kind of movement, because I can't, you know, I can't. I can try, but I'm not going to get very far. So let's just hope their watch keepers are watching. I suppose this is a good time to think about the trip, things I would have done differently. Probably I would have uh, liked to have had a lot more money. That's the, that's the sad thing. If I had more money, I could have uh, got better equipment uh, to make things safer and uh, more secure and a bit more comfortable for me. But, you know, I'm sitting on a shoestring. And, uh, and that's the way it's been. And also, as I told you before, None of the money's mine. My friends have given it to me. You know, and I'm so ever, ever so grateful to them for this opportunity to have this adventure. If it wasn't for them, I would never, 
never even been here, never got here at all. I would still be looking on the internet at nice boats that I like to sail away with. So, really just preparation. I, I could have prepared a bit better, I think, but you know, that's through experience. I didn't really know what I was doing, and I, still, I suppose I do now. So, that's the thing. So, there's no regrets. And whatever happens, happens. You know, I would just like to be able to make it hit the port by myself, you know, get in there. Finish the trip. But you know, we'll see. Oops. The cooker isn't working, but I may managed to make myself a coffee using um using that. So I've had coffee. Everything's cool. I've had porridge with salt. I've had a couple of kin tins of tuna fish. I ain't got much left. I've got these raw eggs, but I don't really want to eat raw eggs. <laughs> Maybe I'll try and fry them with that bun with the burner. We'll see. Um, anyway, I won't bore you. I'll let you get back to what you're doing. And uh, if anything changes here. I'll be sure when things change, because things are about to change for the good or for the worse. I'll let you know. Well, I've reefed in the Genoa totally, so I've just got the mainsail full reefed. It is unbelievable out there. I've never experienced this apart from in big ships. Anyway, so we're a bit more upright. Um, I know water's coming in. I know that. I've had to, so I've had to go outside as well and do the bilge. Pump the bilges. Um, I'll just have to keep on doing that. Because I know there's water coming in from the shaft. It's something I didn't really want to mention. <laughs> but I've got water coming in from the shaft. Bella shaft. Anyway. That's all I can do for now. If it gets even worse, I'm going to have to try and take down the mainsail. I, I don't know how I'm going to do that because it, it, I mean, it's pretty bad out there. But we'll we'll see, we'll see. And anyway, I'm going to take my jacket and coat off his stuff and I don't know. Wait around. Full storm outside. I mean, really full storm. How to go outside and tie down the and tie down the mast again, the mast, the sail again, and. Uh, the mainsail just to make sure it's secure. I mean, I'm totally, totally, totally wet. Big wave came just as I got back in. I mean, I'm gonna have to go out again and do the bilges, but uh, that's for a while. Uh, this is, I mean, a real storm. Huh? You won't be able to see it, I don't think, from it at the windows. I mean, you can't really see. And like I said, it's like a little cocoon in here. But uh, take it from me, this is a real storm. You know. And so much for windy.com and XC Weather and all of them, you know. I've been trying to use them, but I've been using them uh, quite a bit. Uh, they never get it right, seriously. I mean, they like it's. Like, I mean, it looks nice. Windy.com looks really nice, you know, all the lines and stuff like that. But I'm sure for maybe generalised and things, but you know, it was forecast maximum. I think it was 21, 23. You know, gusts of 28, but no rain, no, no, no monumental storm none of that that's for sure unless it's, this is just a freak one but um, you know I just have to wait my only real concern 
is well of course I could get demastered or whatever this mastered but is land but I'm 20 miles away from Mabitha uh, and we are moving um, but we're moving like northwest so Mabitha is west so I'm keeping an eye on that um, the GPS so I've got obviously GPS I've got a chop plotter well it's on the computer and so at least I can see where I am um, it's sort of working I mean it's it's a bit it's a bit knackered um, but it sort of works um, so at least I know I sort of know where I am and so um, if I get too close well well I mean there's not much I can do but I mean I, we've got quite a few hours before I have to start call you know raising the alarm and stuff you know so unless the wind changes and blows me totally west at about five miles an hour then I'm in trouble but I don't uh, that's not going to happen. Well, I shouldn't say that, should I? <laughs> uh, I'm just going to lie down. I mean, there's, not, there's nothing else I can do. I'm trying to keep a watch, but what's the point of keeping a watch? You know. And uh, I'll turn the radio on once in a while, see if anybody's calling me, but, you know, nobody knows I'm here. And if some, some ship calls me, then, you know. Sailor's life for me. Just a little. Right. Huh. Oh. Yeah, I know the lens is going to be a bit. Anyway. It's been now, I don't know how many hours, maybe. Wow. Ten hours it's been going on. In one way, it seems to be calming down, but in another. It, getting worse like the waves are getting bigger and more violent but less of them and uh, the wind seems to have calmed down a bit but then you get big gales which blow you um, but once again inside here it's all right really I mean you know you have to be careful because you get knocked about a bit I might have to hold myself in otherwise I'll get black you know I'm already battered and bruised from being knocked about, but you know it's okay. I mean, Carissa is. I mean, what a, what a boat. She's you know she's only 27 feet, 8.23 meters, and just built like like when I first saw her, I thought she made she look like a like a like a a, a frigate, like a, a a naval vessel, shaped like it, you know, sleek. Um, I mean, she's compact, like little compact battleship. And uh, the only problems you ever have, I've had with her, are things that would break on anything, you know. The wear and tear. Yeah, I mean, I've got leaks and I've got stuff like this. This is because she's old and she's. I mean, she hasn't probably been taken care of for a couple of years, I don't think. So. I'm only every hour getting maybe an hour closer to a, a mile closer to the land so I, I don't think I have to concern myself too much with that as for other shipping well they're gonna have to take care of that themselves um, and I'm just waiting for it to clear up and then I have to decide how to whether to retrace my steps and go back again you know it's about 40 miles I have to then go back for 40 miles to the southwest of Mallorca and go around that way or to go keep on north and then going around the northwest northeast of Mallorca because uh, Alcudia where the marina is, is is on the northeast coast but the problem is that I know that the winds meant to be coming from the northeast for the rest of today and tomorrow and on, on the west coast 
it's all mountains and rocks. Whereas the east coast, it, there's coves and there's, you know, I'm not really sure which way to go. But uh, first of all, the, the storm has to finish. Um, I would like to get in somewhere. Well, I'd like to go straight to the marina, you know, but I don't know what to do. I, like I said, I've got three tins of food left. It's a bit of damage. I've got leaking shafts on the propeller. Batteries can't can't charge the batteries because there's no sun. So you know, I've got no engine. As you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh John. Oh, the situations I get myself into. But that's the whole point. I'm a volunteer. And you can't have adventures without taking risks. And if I do get through this, you know, which I, I, I will somehow, I think. You know. Um, these little YouTube videos won't, won't mean much to anybody, you know, but if I wrote a book, even if no one buys it, I don't care about that, but just writing a book about it would be something, you know, because not many people have these adventures, you should go out and have them, really. Okay, we have a new way of cooking. It's the only way I've got of cooking up the eggs. Don't know if it'll work. It'll work, it'll work. It'll just take its time. But I'm running out of this gas as well. So let's just hope. And get it done. Yes, I know we're swirling all over the place because the storms come back again for a second attempt. A daisy. Yeah, and you see what it's coming in it. It's coming there. I bet you've never seen this before. Me neither. Anyway. Well, that was uh, my egg didn't cook all the way before the gas went out but never mind I mixed it with some tuna fish and there you go <laughs> I've got two tins of sardines left and I've got uh, onion which is garlic you know. and I've got I've got porridge oats which I'll mix with water the weather is uh, well, you know it's not as bad as it was but it's bad enough but the night time's coming in uh, and so I'm gonna have to just well, get through the night and hopefully tomorrow because even if the storm passes this that's this sea isn't isn't gonna sort itself out and so I'm not gonna be able to sail anywhere I'm just gonna have to hang around and then when um, the seas calm down a bit I can head Head to Mallorca. It's very tiring, all of this. Hmm. I think I'm gonna. Uh, Says you try and get some sleep. But you can't. You can't really sleep in this, but you can try. Uh, and I still have to get up every half an hour to have a look and see if there's a boat. But even if there is, I can't do anything. I've got um, my horn and stuff, but will they hear it? I've got a torch, will they see it? I can always hail them on the um, VHF, you know, all stations. If they get too close, of course. Anyway, that'll be it for tonight. See you later. Or sooner depending if anything interesting happens. Well, I've just almost got knocked down again by a big ship. Took no notice of me again, once again. 
and mind my own business. He crossed my path, didn't make any try to move. I had to blow the horn, everything. I mean, just insanity. I mean, about 20 meters away, 20 meters away. I tell you, if I'd had, if I had some rocket flares, I'd fire them at them. I should have kept them. I should have kept them. Sorry. So what happened just before? Well, I was, I was lying on on my bunk, having a rest, and I, and I just, I don't know, I felt some things. So I, I looked out the uh, port side windows, and I saw a ship. First one I'd seen all day, I think. But he was, you know, quite distance away, and he had a. He was going in the same that parallel to me. I was like, okay. His lights were just coming on, and uh, you could see the the two masthead lights, and you could just see his starboard light, his green light. And then I turned around on my starboard side, and there was this big ship, big ship. Yeah. Over 200 meters long, it's got the two masthead lights on, port light shining, heading not not for me, but like just in front of me, and it was about 100 meters away. So I'm like, what? Surely you can see me. I mean, we've got a storm in that here, and the waves are massive, but okay, it's getting dark, and I had my lights on, um, and so I, I, I quickly donned all my fire weather gear. Um, and I went out on deck um, and I started blowing the horn nothing uh, flashing the lights, obviously nothing and he got closer and closer and closer yeah. so I quickly came down here tried with the VHF nothing so by the time I went back up he was right on me and so that's when I, uh, you know, I, I, I had to make the evasive action. Now I was heaved to, which means the tiller was lashed. And so I had to quickly unlash the tiller and uh, I quickly turned us around. Um, missed me, well, I missed him 20 meters. 20 meters. That was it. If I hadn't have been able to unlash the tiller quick enough or get things done. That would have been it. You know, surely he saw me. Surely he saw me. Surely he heard me. Maybe he just didn't give a shit. But I can't. I can't understand that. You know what I mean? In reality, in the real world, he's liable for all these different things if he kills me or insurance or whatever. So maybe he was just one of these guys. You know? Okay, he'll move out the way. Maybe he'd never been in a sailboat before in a storm not realizing that you can't really move out the way but yeah man I wish I could have got a photograph and maybe enhanced it and got a name of the ship because if I ever got the guy I'd smash his face in it's another side of me that uh, comes out sometimes because I can't handle people who are just not correct not dishonorable or stuff like that but anyway I'm not going to go on about that going about that. Speaking a bit. Back again. So, after that episode, because I had to unlash myself, unlash myself, and, uh, from being he he hove to, um, I couldn't heave to again. I couldn't turn around, I couldn't jive, go back up to the same, and then heave to again. And so I had to make a decision to go north or to go south. I was pointing north and I was getting out of the well, I was getting further away from Ibiza, which was the most important thing, but it would have meant I, I would have to go around the northwest uh, part of, of Mallorca, which I told you is full of is, 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 is big, rocky. Um, and if the wind's coming from that direction, it would be a difficult, well, more difficult than what, what we've got anyway. And so I decided to go to retrace my steps. Um, on my wake and uh, go back in the same direction and hopefully get down to the southwest of Mallorca 
Um, so I've been on deck most of the night. That's what I'm doing, and I've I've lashed the tiller again, but not heave to. It's just at an angle because the waves are so big and so uh, strong. It's pushing the it's pushing Carusia back to the ether again, and so um, everything's tied up to push us back towards Mallorca. I'm making about one or two knots. Um, but as long as the distance between me and Ibiza doesn't change too much, uh, I'm not too concerned. I'm going to have to keep checking it. But at the moment it's 19.5 um, miles. And like I said before, it'll take a long time before I would hit her. Ibiza, that is. So, you know, that's the lead shore. I'm not wor worried about smashing into Mallorca because the wind's coming from that direction. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. I mean, I'm not making much headway. I haven't really made anything today at all. I'm, I haven't gone anywhere. That's not the most, most important thing today. The most important thing is to survive. Uh, because, the, you know, I'm out here by myself. Anything can happen. You know, if I have an accident, if I fall overboard, if something happens, I'm finished, yeah. That's what's meant to happen, that's what's meant to happen. But you know, I'm not over exaggerating the point that uh, when you do go to sea by yourself, you are taking your life into your hands. No one's going to be able to save you in time. You might have all of the little emergency things, and you might have your beacons, you might have the flares, you might have this, and light, life jacket, and all of this, but. Strange thing because when it's like this, when it's really, off, I don't feel scared. You know, I don't feel scared. It's it's a strange feeling. You know, even with the boat, uh, with the big shit, I did feel scared. Well, I was more angry with him, but I suppose because there's action. You know, there's a storm, there's, there's waves, there's things happening. There's an action kind of thing gets your adrenaline pumping and it, it keeps you excited and, uh, and it, tell you the truth I quite enjoy it I'm not being smashed into it but I enjoy being outside and I enjoy the fighting with the helm and the waves and all this bouncing up and down and the way I, you know, it's quite good fun you know <laughs> if you forget the fact that it's going to be life or death but it's quite good fun whereas when it's when it's in be calm then I'm in them calms and I'm just sitting there and it's like slogging I'm waiting that's more scary for me. That's more scary for me. And especially if there's a mist. I mean, be calmed with a mist. Frightens the life out of me now. Because you, there's just nothing you can do. Unless you've got an engine, of course. Whereas at least when it's a big storm, that little sail I've got up, the little sail, you know, the mainsail reefed f t fully. That turned me around. I turned the boat around. That got me away from that big ship. So there you go. Anyway, I'm going on and on and on and on. I'm going to go back out and have a little look to see if there's any other ships. <laughs> Good morning. Hope you can hear me. Oh, bit of rubbish in the sea. Um, what happened after last night? Well, last night was, as you know, a big storm. Um, I lashed the tiller. Carissia sailed herself through it a little bit. Maybe one or two knots, but in the right direction. Away from Ibiza, towards Mallorca. And then at about 7.30 this morning, I took the helm. It was still really rough, but I managed. And I've been on the tiller since then. And it's calmed down a lot. Um, I was close, close hauled, but I've turned slightly south, southeast, 
So instead of being 60 degrees, I'm on 90, which will take me just south of the island, because uh, that's where I want to be. I don't want to go to it. I want to go just south of it and skirt around it and get into a marina or a port or somewhere. And so the wind has eased off a bit, because as you know, apparent wind, the closer you are to the wind, the wilder it can seem. And then if you're heading away from the wind, downwind, it sometimes doesn't seem as though you have any wind, which is, can be dangerous, because then when you want to maybe pull the mast down or whatever and you have to turn into the wind, that's when you get a bit of a shock. Anyway, so I'm sailing. I've got 17 miles to go before I get to a way, my waypoint, and by then I should be able to see the island. And like I said, then I'll skirt around to the, the south of the island, not the south, the, the east of the island, and find uh, either Porto Colom or somewhere, but I, I won't get in tonight. So I think it'll be another night out here. I'll maybe have to heave to somewhere. And uh, we'll see what happens. Um, I've got one tin of sardines left and raw eggs and porridge with cold water. So, feast tonight. I doubt you'll be able to see it, but on the horizon, land ahoy! Land ahoy! Sacalobra, part of Mallorca. Little island off the, well, it's a nature reserve off the southwest coast. I'd love to head towards it, but <laughs> I need to head off it, just in case the weather changes, which is already changing. The wind's gone down, the waves have gone a bit strange again, um, but that way, but land ahoy. So I've put all the sails up because the wind came down and uh, we're still making maybe I think four knots, which is okay. I mean, really, I'd like to get there faster, which means maybe I could get in tonight, but, but, but getting in at night time into a port, because I'm going to try and get into Port of Cologne and get, take up a, a mooring buoy. But, you know, at night time, place I don't know. I've never, I've never, <laughs> I've never taken up a mooring buoy before. You know what I mean? Well, I have in, in, on, on the course with Chris, but... Um, so that'll be a first. And also because I have to get into the port without an engine, so I, I'm going to have to sail in. So all of this is going to be another a bit of an adventure in itself. Well, I've still got to get there, you know. Who knows what might happen. I can see clouds on the horizon. I mean, we could get hit by another storm. I could get becalmed. Uh, the sea monsters could come. I mean, uh, who knows, you know. Uh, my crew seems quite happy. Uh, Billy Boy's okay. Billy, Bill the Bungie's happy enough. He's got his two friends there. Well, one friend, another friend's asleep. Uh, Carissa seems all right, but she's been battered and bruised on this trip, man. She really needs some love and tender care. And as for me, well, I could do with a good bath and uh, some food and a bit of mental relaxation. <laughs> but we're not there yet. We're not there yet. Because even if I if I can't get into Porto Colom, I might have to go all the way to the uh, Bonnier Marina, which is another day and a half away, around the, the north coast, which is another adventure in itself, you know, especially with the forecast. But then again, the forecast is from windy.com and XC weather. So who knows? Anyway, I'll keep you updated. It's getting closer and closer, but it's still a long, 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 long way away. And yes, you've guessed it. Yeah, no wind, slightly floppy, uh, nothing really. So I'm having to head away from there if, if I can once again, because I don't want to get into a lee shore, because if the wind picks up, I get knocked onto it or just be drifting onto it like this. So I have to head away. Over there, there's been a thunderstorm over Mallorca. And on this side, there is a rainstorm in the, in the sea and there's clouds coming all over me.
So I think I've got another wonderful day in store for me. Yes, I've got my sombrero on and all this kind of stuff. Because also it's been hot. So we've had everything today. Everything today, as usual. You might be asking me, when am I going to get home? I don't know. I don't know. I just don't know. I've just had my last tin of sardines. All I've got now is porridge and water. That's it. That's like gruel in the olden days, I suppose, you know? Just gruel. That's what people survived upon, wasn't it? So that's what I'm going to have to live on. Gruel. Gruel. So, as I'm trying to steer it with floppy, floppy sails to try and move it a bit more away. Uh, I'm 11 miles from her at the minute, but you just don't know, you know? I mean, I prefer about 15. So if I get moved on to it with a storm, I've got, I've got some space, you know? So I'm thinking about reefing the sails before. I don't know if these, these, this, this will come, the rain or whatever, but you know, I need to be ready. That's what I'm thinking of doing next is uh, reefing the sails. Um, it's just a hell of a If you followed my videos and watched them, I mean, how many days has it been like this? How many mad days has it been? When have I had a full day? That's where I've been able to sail and have, have fun. I think this is a, well, I've said before, it's a trial, you know. I don't know if I've passed or if I'm passing it. I don't know what passing it is. Maybe I don't fall apart. Maybe, who knows? Who knows what it's all about? Who knows what's in? Who, who knows the secret of the black tray? Is that what it is? If you're old enough, you'll remember the black chocolate. Is it? No, it's dairy milk tray. It's black magic and dairy milk tray, wasn't it? Yeah. Anyway, I'm going to have to concentrate for a bit. And hopefully maybe I'll have time to speak to you soon with good news not more drama not, not more drama but I mean I won't be getting in tonight whatever yeah I'm still like I'm 11 miles from that island but there's another 30 miles to go before I could reach Port Colom Port de Colom and I don't even know if I want to go in there because I think well I might get in there but the thing is I want Carissia to get somewhere where I know she can be you know I can put her there and that's it I don't want to take her to Port of Colom and then have to leave after two or three days and then take her around the other side of the island. So we'll see. We'll sort something out. See ya. I'm spending my evening outside dodging, uh, dodging storms. There's about four or five storms and there's about two or three of them over uh, Mallorca and a couple out at sea. And so I'm spending my time trying to dodge them. I'd don't know if we're going to be successful. Uh, there's not much wind, so that's not very good. God, what a mess I am. And I'm trying to get, I just want to get home. But you know, I'm doing my best. I'm doing my best. And I'll see you later. Later. And yeah, be calmed again. Oops. So I've been up all night on the tiller, trying to keep us from hitting, or going up to the rocks. I've got these sails out to try and do some kind of movement. You know, I'm 20 miles from the port. Have you any idea what it's like? This is torture. It really is torture. And this, this forecast for all day, this, all day. So I could be hanging around here, trying to dodge ships, watching the rocks, uh, trying to keep myself from going insane all day. And then who knows tomorrow, you know, really if the wind will come or not. Try the engine again, it's, it's not working at all. Uh, I'm gonna get the outboard out now and um, 
to have a, have a look and make sure that works. But the thing is, I mean, I can't use it now for the dinky because it's like I said, 20 miles, it won't make it. But just in case of an emergency, um, you know, I can see, I can see my homeland you know, where I live. I can see it. I'm that close to it, and it's after all this time, almost eight weeks, and I can't get there. <laughs> not a good day, not a good start to the day, but we'll see, maybe things will get better. Eh? There's something in the water really far away, I can't get to it because, you know, it'd be calmed, but it looks like the back of a plane. It looks like the back of a crashed plane, I mean, it's probably not, but then, here, there's something else weird in the water. I don't know if you can see that. Let me see if I can get it. We're not moving at all. At all, at all, at all. And it is hot. I'm even trying to fry an egg. And I don't think it'll work, but I've got to try something. I've just had porridge again and it's a bit, you know, it's getting a bit too much, the gruel. So, here I am again. In these situations. I don't know if you noticed, but ever since uh, I think it was Al Merimar, I've had all of the major th dramas that have happened to me already in the trip happen again, but all in a short space of time. I don't know if you realize that. And oh, even in the, in the, from the Straits of Gibraltar, you could say with the, with the, the ship almost hitting me. And then the other night, the ship almost hitting me. And then I've had so many um, calms, and now I've got the worst calm. Uh, I've had bad weather, but then the other night I had the biggest storm. Everything seems to be intensity ratching up. You know, it's like okay, you know, and now here we are. Like it's gonna, it's, it's 10 o'clock in the morning, it's boiling hot, it's gonna be like this all day. Uh, and what, what, you know, it's like, okay. It's like, will I ever get home? I mean, I've tried the, uh, the outboard motor, it works. I, you know, I can always blow up the dinghy and just, and just sail away and just, you know, but I, I mean, I can't. But it's like, pff, hey man, what's going on? You know, I've had me moments of despair, I've had me tears, I've had me crying about wanting to get away and wanting to go home and all of this, but at the end of the day, sorry I'm going in and out of shade, but it's really hot. At the end of the day, what can I do? I just have to be here and that's it. So I'm getting on with stuff, I've done me washing, wash the dishes, like I said, check the, the outboard engines, uh, tried this out again, it doesn't work. Uh, I'm just getting things done because what else can I do? Just get things done. Yes, that. Yeah, yeah. You see how clear and blue this this sea is around here. I don't know if you can see them, but I can see the fish in the water, all swimming around. I mean, beautiful, huh? Nice and blue. The fish. I think they're going to get fed. But I'm just having a shower. Now I know what the galley slaves felt like. You have to resort to something in the end, don't you? Takes a bit of getting used to. You have to do a kind of a figure eight. And I'm not very good at it. And the oar's a bit too short.
I reckon that could get me around the world. And why not? It's a very, very, very hot day. And the sails are flogging. And the sea isn't moving. And it has been a long time. It's not the longest calm. The longest was in Bayona, three days, I think. But this is just like... Phew. Also, no food. Apart from a bit of porridge, of course. I've just had some porridge. With nice water. <laughs> somebody gave me a, an iPhone. I'm not really into phones and stuff like that, but somebody gave me one. And I've just realised that I can actually, I can email people from, from the boat. It's like madness, isn't it? I must be about 15 kilometres, 15 miles off the coast. And I can actually email people. And I've got contacts, people have been contacting me asking where I am. Because I'm about three or four weeks late. So people are wondering. And um, I have to go back to work. And people are saying, you know... He disappeared, which I basically did. I disappeared off the face of the earth and went into the sea. I've been thinking a lot about life, obviously. Life is a game. And I'm thinking, like, I keep getting these hurdles I have to get over on this trip, as, as we all do in life, yeah, but this is just an example. You know, and in, like, in this situation, it's always, um, there's a storm. I have to deal with that. Then we get becalmed. When I'm becalmed, there's always a big ship comes. I have to deal with that. There's always, there's always like a similar thing, a similar theme, except things seem to get harder. It's like you go up a level. And I think what happens is that, because I feel as though I've done this before, you see. The more I'm here, I'm like... I've, I've done this before. So I'm like, but maybe it comes to a stage when, oh, the ship hits you. Okay, and so in the next game, you know, it's better. There's a Tom Cruise movie, I think, where he kept dying and stuff. There's something strange going on, you know. I think it is a test. I think life is a, is a game. And it's a kind of a something you have to get through and improve and I actually think that we come back as ourselves all the time I don't think we come back as someone else you know reincarnation I think we just keep living this over and over and over again until we get up to a certain level where we pass and the past takes us to heaven nirvana whatever it is that you, you know fits you. Uh, it's a strange one. But the more I'm here by myself, alone, and everything just, everything seems to be the same. Everything but a bit harder or, or a bit easier even. Because maybe I've learned it in the last, last one. I can't really explain it to you. I'm going to have to think about this. And I'll put it down in the book, which I'm going to write. And which, of course, you will buy, won't you? Because if you buy it, that'll refund, that will fund the restoration of Carissia so I can take her on a, a trip. And I think the trip I want to take her on next, if I, if I make it, yeah, is uh, a Vuelta de Mallorca. So go around Mallorca and um, just visit all the anchorages free anchorages, uh, cheaper moorings, maybe visit some places and meet some meet some people, meet some people. That would be a nice one and hopefully I would take Juliet and Laura with me. Um, maybe on, only on some stages or whatever. Maybe I'll bring other people on board. This is an idea that's going around my head because um, I think it would be something interesting. Anyway, that's it for now.
for lunch I had, what was it for lunch? It was porridge with uh, the last of the almond paste, which so it was a bit of a sweet dish. This evening we've got porridge with um, soup powder, like a curried soup powder. So, let's, uh, let's give it a little taste. Mmm, that is nutritious. I hope I don't lose all my weight before I leave here. <laughs> but um, what can you do? Mmm, porridge is good stuff. All right, well, porridge soup thing didn't really go down so well. Ended up giving half of it to the fish. Uh, I think I'll just have it plain, plain porridge with water. Tastes better. Um, I was thinking about going into Port de Colombe, I told you on the way, but um, the, I'm about 8 to 10 miles off the coast, and I would have had to turn in 8, to 10, eight, eight miles to get into Port de Colombe, and the wind wasn't allowing me to do that. Um, and so in the end, I've drifted past it. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue on to the final destination. Isn't, isn't that a movie? Um, which is uh, Bonaire Marina, and it's right at the north, uh, northwest side of Mallorca. Uh, in the I think it's it's not in the Bay de Alcudia. It's I think it's the Bay de Poyensa, and um, that's where I'm going to take her out of the water. Uh, it's it's cheap for Mallorca, it's, it's 100 euros a month when it she's out of the water, which is cheap. It's my nose already again. Um, so yeah. A few videos ago I said about, I was talking about um, going past Cabrera, which was on the south. I said it was on the southwest, it wasn't the southeast, so just a correction. So, I'm going to continue on, and it's going to be 50 miles. So... <laughs> 50 more miles, which if, if the weather was really good and we had good wind, I could do in a couple of days, or even one day, if I was one of these, you know, proper sailors. And, um, yeah, so I'm going to do 50 more miles without any food. Uh, I've got plenty of water, and let's hope that we get some wind, which will make it more than just a couple of days. Because if it turns into a saga... What I'll do is I think I'll I'll anchor somewhere and get Laura and Juliet to come and uh, bring me more food and <laughs> provisions so I can continue the journey. Because once in a while I can text them now. When I get in a bit close, it works. Uh, like I said, the emails work and stuff. I don't really like all that kind of stuff, you know. But we're living in the modern world. And uh, I'm going to have to get used to um, the masks. A mascara soon. That should be fun. Um, I've had a couple of emails from parents of students of mine. I'm a teacher. So I've got these students, these children I've taught since for, for years and years and years and years. Anyway, uh, and the parents tell me that it's been really bad, the, um, the plague over the summer. got my thoughts about all of this and uh, I don't want to talk about it but everybody seems to be very wary still a bit scared paranoid um, and accepting the fact that these masks are gonna protect them from this virus which is like the deadliest thing since what since um, never anyway I'm gonna I'm going to have a little sleep, 20 minutes sleep, it's early, it's not even 7 o'clock I don't think. Um, I'm going to start having um, my naps now, so that if the wind does change, I'll be rearing to go. Evening, well, after all of that calm, 
slowly slowly it lifted and we got a slight breeze and so I was able to head up north and uh, I had a little rest and then now in the evening time we're about 10-15 miles more north 20 miles from the, the turn at the northeast corner storm clouds are coming the winds picking up I've had to put all the reefs in again and I'm waiting for these big 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 black clouds and lightning to descend upon us let's hope that they uh, shift to the east away uh, otherwise I'm in for another night another night it's all fun and games isn't it yep it's about half seven in the morning the storm didn't come but it's really choppy and it's over there the storm and that's where the headland is that's where I have to get round it's about uh, 15 miles away uh, it's really been wild over there last night and this morning with thunder and lightning so I'm a bit I'm, I'm, I'm a bit off I've got a, I'm trying to get like 10 miles off and sort of heading in this direction to try and get around the weather but you know we'll see I'm just hoping it'll ease off really and then I can make more of a direct approach once again red sky morning sailors warning but you know it's over the land at the minute <laughs> so Hopefully we'll be okay. Nice colours though. Here I am. I'd like to be at home, Clara and Juliet, Mona and Atula on the sofa. Let's just hope I do make it in the next couple of days. About 40 miles away from the port, but as you know, 40 miles can be forever especially on the slow boat to Palma I'll speak to you soon I've had my breakfast cold cup of tea cold porridge very nice didn't put anything in the porridge kept it kept it raw raw plain it's very nice I quite like it like that I've hove to um, the rain's starting winds I'm not sure if they're going to pick up or not hope not we just have to batten down the hatches and um, ride it through again um, Carissia is heading away from the land which is good but obviously that means once the storm's over I've got more distance to travel but um, I'd rather be doing that than uh, trying to stop yourself from being beaten against the rocks so well if you've been with me on this trip it's been a very long trip and I hope um, it's not that I hope you're, en you're enjoying it I just hope that you I, I just hope that you've also had a sense of adventure coming with me and the fear and the fun because it has been fun I mean don't forget you know I've enjoyed myself but there's always been this nervousness about it because uh, number one I don't know what I'm doing 
Number two, anything can happen. And number three, I've never really had full days where I could just relax and do stuff. You know, especially being on the tiller all the time. I haven't done any of the things I thought I could do. I was going to read books and write, write, write other books, you know, because I've got lots of books in my head I always have had. I thought this would be the time to do that. Contemplate the universe. I've done that a bit, but, you know, most of the time I've been on the tiller and just taking care of Carissia. Um, but I've learnt a hell of a lot in seven weeks, that's for sure. Hell of a lot in seven weeks. Let's just hope in the next couple of days, or maybe even tomorrow, that I can get into port and that I can start to uh, digest everything that's happened and settle it all in my mind. And I think it, it I know it's changed me. Let's just hope that it's changed me for the better, which I think it has. But that can only be shown by the reflection and response from other people, the way I, I treat them, or the way I am with them. Anyway, speak soon. So after the storm, it's now late afternoon, about six o'clock or something. And of course we've got the choppy, playful seas after the storm. There's the headland, I don't know if you can see that I want to try and get past, but well, I am going to get past. And the seas. Bouncing Chris here around. A bit choppy, you could say. A bit choppy. The storm wasn't as bad as the other night, for sure. It was quite quick, really. But it's left us with this choppy seas. But at least it wasn't like yesterday, where we were 24 hours be calm. See, 24 hours be calm, then the storm. Now this. Um, high winds. I'm reefed down. It's all very sloppy. I'm not making much headway. Uh, but at least I'm going in the right direction. I just have to make sure that I give that headland, a lot of space, in case all of a sudden we'd be calmed, yeah, and then uh, I get washed onto it, so, because I never know what's going to happen one minute to the next. If all goes well, and the wind stays okay, and the seas calm down a bit, in about, I don't know, by midday, hopefully, whoops, midday, hopefully earlier, I'll be uh, in port, hopefully. That would be nice. If not evening time, and if not another day, you know, I just have to accept the fact that the seas are in September, you know. Seas change and the weather changes in September in Mallorca as it gets stormy. It's not a summer paradise as people think. Winters are freezing cold and humid. Well, not freezing cold, you know, I'm exaggerating, but. Gets damp, humid, and cold. And we get storms in September usually. And we've, as you've seen, we've had a couple. Anyway, that's it for now. Oh, once I've got past this headland, I'll give you a shout. Another crazy storm, this one. Right off off that, that headland. I haven't moved anywhere all day, well, for hours since the last time I spoke to you. Got a massive storm outside. The waves are massive. Um, I'm six, six and a half miles off, off the coast. So I should be okay. Um, and yeah, so I'm looking at the map thing there. This is just crazy, man. This is just really crazy. Electrical storm and then these massive waves and this wind. But um, anyway, sign off.
Well, the storm's slightly over, but the gale is still there slightly. It's getting gusts and the waves, look at the, the sea, is just a mess. I know you can't see on the video, but... gonna get there. Just seen some lightning over there. It's a bit rough, sorry, so I have to Oops. man what a life. <laughs> oh Jesus I hope I can get in somewhere. I've I'm set sail Trying to keep away from them rocks over there. I don't know if you can see them. They're about eight miles away, but of course I'll get drifted onto them. I don't really know where I'm going. Well, I, I do, I'm, I'm going in that direction, but I might have to tack over to there and go all that way and then try and come back along. The wind's pretty crazy, and the waves are. Whoa, the waves, well, the waves are waves, aren't they? The waves seem to be doing whatever they want to do at the moment. But anyway, I have to go back. Just a quick update. It's taken me over almost 24 hours to pass this headland because of the storms. Two storms. still haven't really passed it yet. It's just beautiful though, isn't it? Mallorca is a beautiful island. Anyway, oops, going off course, best. See how dodgy this is? Because of the waves and the way the wind is. I'm not careful every time I just get blown back onto these rocks. So I have to tack again. I mean, it's calmed down a hell of a lot, but the, the sea is just so choppy, and it's so I can't put all the all the sails up. So this turns into a nightmare. Anyway, speak soon. Good morning. Wow. This is uh, Calafon Mentor, north of the island, little area, beauty spot where you can come and anchor. And for me, this is the end of my trip, Poyensa in the distance, not Poyensa. Maybe it is, yeah. That's where the marina is. I didn't want to go into the marina just yet. Because this is a perfect place to end a difficult but exciting voyage. I made it. After five days training, sailed I think in the end it was meant to be just about 2,000 but in the end it's nearly 3,000 with all the detours and all the messes and all the, all the tacks and heading against the wind so when I looked at the um, waypoints it's nearly 3,000 miles it took me seven weeks but nine of them days I've had um, in a port still a long time well wow. Trip. What a trip. Something I'll never forget. And 
something that, to be quite honest, I wasn't sure. Yeah, I wasn't sure if I'd make it. Many times I thought, I'd, uh, but like you couldn't give up. Because what are you going to do? Well, you could call for help. But I just thought, I, didn't, I just thought, well, yeah, as you know, death and destruction. But you know, I've learned so much. And um, just, I think it was this morning, I realised that it was a bit of an achievement, John. Yeah, a bit of an achievement, mate. Anyway, I'm going to, uh, I've got it. I'm going to tidy up the, the boat, Chris here, and uh, sort out the tender because I need to use that as a towboat to get it into the marina. I don't know if I'll do that to today or maybe I might stay here tonight, I don't know. Laura and Juliet should be coming up. Bring you some food, hopefully. If not, I'll see them when I get to um, the marina. Anyway, I'm going to have a sit down and a bit of a contemplation for a bit. Hope you've enjoyed it. Things are looking up. Look, proper food. Delicious curry. Delicious curry. Laura and Juliet came, give me their love, give me their food, they've gone away home and then they're going to come back tomorrow and I'm going to have some crew and we're all going to go off to the marina. This should be fun. Beautiful day, had by all, big posh ship, ugly mug. Well, so, had a lovely day, great end of the trip, lots to think about, lots to contemplate, I'll be doing lots of that tonight, and relaxing, eating lots of good food, because I've also got an Italian dish as well to eat, which I will. And they've got, uh, Julia got me a beer, which I'll drink, has to be Corona. Corona is the best beer in the world, probably. And, um, yes, yeah, I'm going to tuck into the, uh, the curry. Mmm.